The next step in our app is to create a functionality where we can see a history of our games. And for that, we're going to use lists. One of the coolest features of C Sharp, I love working with lists. They are super powerful. You can do many interesting things with them, really versatile, and they're used all the time in real world applications. So let's see what this is all about. First, let's see a couple of ways that lists can be declared. And the first thing that we notice here is that we have to specify the type of the list. But here we are using angle brackets to specify the type, which is a little bit different from arrays. So this is the explicit declaration of a list. And this is the only way it could be done in the past. But now there are shorter versions. One of them is saying list equals new in parentheses. But I'm going to stick to my favorite and declare a var with the type on the right side of the declaration. So this is the list that I'm going to use to store the history of games. And I'm declaring it on top of the file outside of any methods so that it can be used by all methods. And when we do that, we say that that variable has a global scope as opposed to a local scope, which is when we declare a variable inside a method. And the other cool thing about lists is that we don't need to declare its size. It's totally dynamic which makes it much more versatile than arrays. So let's see how we're gonna populate this list with the games that we play. Let's go down to the addition method and below the for loop, which is collapsed, we're gonna say games.add, which is pretty clear. We're adding an item to the list and that item will be a string, which is indicated by the quotes. We're gonna use a string interpolation using the dollar sign because we need dynamic data coming from the variables. And the first thing I want to have when I record a game is the date. So when we use datetime.now, that's going to be the date at the moment that the game is finished. Then I'm going to hard code the type of game, which is addition, since we are inside the addition method. And lastly, we're going to have the score, which is a variable created inside the method. So let's run the app using the debugger to see what happens. So let's type our name and quickly play a game. And I put a breakpoint in the games.add line. And if we hover over the games, we can see that at the moment, the count of the list is zero. So there are no elements in the list. So let's advance one line. And now we can see that the list is populated with our first string. We have the date at the time it was recorded, the type of game and the score. So now that we can play multiple games, let's try to play one more time. And let's hover over the list again to see what it contains. And we can see that it now has two items. And that shows how easy it is to work with lists and how they're super helpful. So now let's go back to the menu and let's create an option for the users to see a list of the previous games. So we're going to use the V option for that. And we're creating a new case in the switch statement. When the users press V, a method will be called and that's called get games method. And here I'm using Visual Studio tools to create a new method. And in this method, we're going to use something that we have seen before. We're going to loop through the list using the for each loop, which we had previously used to loop through arrays. So for each game in the games list, we're going to print its content, which is just a string. But to make it more readable and a better user experience, Let's add a console.write line with a title, games history, and then let's add some separation using dashes. We're also going to clear the console to clean up the clutter, and then another separation after the loop, another sequence of dashes with a new line in the end. And then one more time, we're going to prompt the user to press any key to go back to the main menu. And for that, as you know already, we need to use console.readline. So let's quickly play another game. And when we go back to the menu and type V, we can see the history of games, which now is just one. But I use a forward slash instead of a backslash after our dashes. So I need to change that so that it creates a new line for us. So let's test again.
I'm playing two games and when I press V I can see my list with the exact time when the games were finished. Now after I change the indentation of my menu it started looking a bit wonky so I'm gonna change it back so that everything is nicely formatted. And now instead of repeating the code to insert the games into the games list we're gonna create a new method called add to history passing as an argument the score and the type of game. So inside the addition game, I'm calling this method, which still doesn't exist, but we're going to use Visual Studio tools to create the method. We can use generate method add history, and it creates that method already with the arguments that you passed when you called it. I'm just changing the name of the argument so there's no confusion with the score variable. So inside the method, I'm printing the message exactly like we did before using the date and the score. But this time, the game type is also a variable, which is being passed by each game. So now going back to the addition game method, we can get rid of the games.add statement. And then we're going to call the same method in each game, but passing the different game types. Then I'm going to fast forward and play all four types of games. And when we choose to view the games, all of them are there, unfortunately without any points. It looks like you don't need to be good at maths to be a professional programmer. So that's your introduction to lists, but make sure you read the link in the show notes below to the Microsoft documentation about lists so you can see what else it does and to understand them a little bit more in depth.